statistical facts and not educating you with what's going on and why things were happening. If you, perfect example, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Last week I mentioned to you guys that they want to get uh, Beeman, Beeman, Coach Beeman fired because he pays too much attention to fundamental. Do you hear that? He is too fundamentally inclined. He is attempting to teach us our craft too much. Listen to that. Just imagine if you could go to school and say, man, the teacher giving out too much home. Your parents would slap the hell out of you. But these dudes at work saying, they're trying to teach us our job too much. This is because they didn't learn basketball. They just saw Michael Jordan flying over everybody, Kobe Bryant flying over everybody, Allen Iverson beating you off the dribble, doing a lot of, you know, falling to the ground and being a tough guy. And they said, that's all we need to know. Be like AI, Michael Jordan, Tracy McGrady, so forth and so on. That's why a lot of people probably don't appreciate the excellence and the elegance of one LeBron James because you don't know the damn game. Therefore, you don't know what you're looking at and you don't understand that you may never see this again. But, it's your choice. But back to my point. The NBA is starting to be far more exciting than it used to be. It is mad competitive. And you are starting to see coaches coach and players play. You have to, if you're living in Chicago, you have to do nothing but drive 90 miles up the road to Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Bucks are doing the damn thing. Doing the damn thing. Another team that is showing you if you have a coach and you have people buying into the coach, they can win. They are 12 and 14. I want to say big ups to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Look, you got Chris Paul, who's allegedly washed. And you got uh, uh, the coach from Florida, Billy Donovan. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. And all of a sudden, they had two games under 500. They are in the seventh playoff spot in the Western Conference. And y'all told me the Western Conference was the best thing since sliced, since sliced bread. Explain to me how Billy Donovan loses a Hall of Famer in Russell Westbrook. Gains a Hall of Famer in Chris Paul. And he out there with Manny Moore and Jack, and they two games under 500. And they are contending for a playoff position. Will it be in the playoffs? Maybe not. Who knows? But it's it's one thing that is obvious. One thing for sure, two things is obvious. Billy Donovan is, ha- is executing basketball plays. They came and kicked my bull's draws in the ass last night. Chris Paul looked like 10 years ago, Chris Paul. So all you people that are saying he watched, yeah, he can't do what he did 10 years ago, but the last time I checked, you can't eat. At the end of the day, this is a dude who has had players buy into his program, and they're going to develop talent and win, win, win. Most teams aren't doing that anymore. They got to Chris Paul, they got to Billy Donovan. Big ups to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Y'all told me they was tanking. They told you we just getting rid of a problem and add solutions. Big ups. To them. Hey, everybody love Russell Westbrook, but please explain to me how you get you are getting triple doubles and you're the man and nobody plays harder than you and it's addition by subtraction. They look better by subtracting him. Younger, bigger, stronger, faster, record worse. I don't understand that. Yes, I do. I do understand. It. This is simple logic. Russell West, Russell Westbrook basketball IQ is not where it should be. He can he rarely exercises the good sense that I know he has in his head because he's not a a clown who's going around getting arrested all the time. He's a family man. He exercises. Tremendous intelligence off intelligence off the basketball court, but for whatever reason, he doesn't exercise much on the basketball court. And when you have someone running wild like a child in the walk of big up to Jane Clan, uh you have people standing around and watching him. This is this is why I will continue to say this. This is why Michael Jordan is one of the greatest basketball, if not basketball players in the history of the game, in the history of the NBA. Because 
Michael Jordan had the same intensity of five red hot suns that Russell Westbrook has, but Michael Jordan understood how to harness that energy and put it in a situation to where as he could dominate and have others participate. Russell Westbrook never learned that. Therefore, I keep telling y'all, people love Russ. Oh man, Russ, the man, he got triple doubles. This is why when y'all start running stats at me, I say, what is his impact on the game? Because Michael Jordan has the ability. You know what? I'm not even going to go with Michael Jordan because it's, that's low-hanging fruit to get one of the greatest ever. I will go with lower-hanging fruit. Isaiah Thomas. I will go even lower-hanging fruit. Scotty Pippen. Gary Payton. I mean, higher fruit. Scotty Pippen. Gary Payton. Tim Hardaway. Rod Strickland. Their impact on the game is far more significant than a Russell Westbrook. Do their stats look like it? Are they getting 10 points? Are they getting 10 rebounds? Are they getting 10 assists? No, they're not. But their impact on each game that they participate in, the aforementioned Mark Jackson, their impact on the game is far greater than one Russell Westbrook. And the NBA is slowly but surely getting back to that. If you stand Russell Westbrook's statistics up to a next to a Rod Strickland, you'll go, there's no way in hell you comparing Rod Strickland to Russell Westbrook. But when you watch a game, when you see Rod Strickland leave, leave the New York Knicks, and get traded for a Maurice Cheeks and go to the San Antonio Spurs and watch him go one errant pass away from the NBA Finals against the Portland Trailblazers, you go, damn it. Damn it. When you see Mark Jackson lead the New York Knicks and go to the Indiana Pacers two years later, they're in the NBA Finals, you go, damn it. Damn it. You realize impact has nothing to do with your your statistical output. Impact has everything to do with your uh, basketball acumen, your basketball intelligence, and what you bring to the table. And that's what a lot of these NBA players don't have. My Bulls have a team filled with athletes. This, this big boy, Yuri Markkinen, seems to be a solid ball player. Went to Carter the third. Very good ball player. My man Zach Levine, even better ball player, but they didn't develop it. And it's going to take them to have a coach like a, a Larry Brown, who's a teacher, who's going to get up under their skin and get on their nerves and push them to be the best possible basketball team that they can be. So until that happens, my Bulls will continue to struggle. They, they've been looking better over the last few weeks, but they won't be in contention until you can get somebody who knows how to speak the language of young people and then has the uh, intestinal fortitude to push them to the limit to make them damn they want to punch them in the face but then realize damn he's teaching me ask Allen Iverson ask Chauncey Billis before Allen Iverson got Larry Brown he was just a dude scoring at will get Larry Brown league MVP now he's a Hall of Famer was he going to be a Hall of Famer more than likely he was but it's, it's easy to put him in the Hall of Fame once he got that league MVP trophy, once he has that NBA Finals appearance, and, and looking at his stature at 5'11", now it's like, it's, he's iconic, he had impact on the game, he dominated like no other, bam, put him in the Hall of Fame. And again, this is all about basketball acumen. It is making a comeback, so I can't really trip. But big ups to the dudes who are in the NBA doing the damn thing, big ups. Now, with that being said, I have a couple stories that I want to talk about in the National Basketball Association. Uh, the, uh, the NBA has a few injuries that we need to talk about. And the biggest one, well, I'm only going to talk about one of the biggest one, Luka Doncic. You can, Luka Doncic is the hottest thing since sliced bread in the National Basketball Association. And he's out for a couple of games. So this lets me know, this makes me go, it's time for Christoph Porzingis to step up, show up, and show out. I don't think he can. I don't think he has the intestinal fortitude to do it. Big ups to him for putting on 20, 15, 20 pounds of muscle. He needed the big ups to him for that. But can you take that 15, 20 pounds of muscle and the skills that you possess? 
and say, hey, I'm about to take over this team because one of my buddies, which is his true buddy, uh, 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 that is his true buddy, was running the team before he got there. Before I continue, I want to make sure you understand this is built for this network. This is the End the Bench Podcast. I am H. Rap B. And thank you, whether you're listening in the background or you're coming into the chat room, I really appreciate each and every one of you tuning in and, and hopefully engaging and having a little fun. If you don't engage, I get it. I understand. Back to Luca Doncic. Luca Doncic is down for a, a, a few weeks. He's going to miss this whole East Coast swing. But Christoph Porzingis is going to be the man. To me, if I was Ron Cuban, this would determine if I am going to pay this dude big money or am I going to let him continue to continue to search because he's not really making a tremendous impact on the Dallas Mavericks the way a seven foot one a supposedly multi-talented big man should. I'm I'm just not seeing it. We're going to see if the Knicks get rid of them too fast or they can take their time. Now, with that being said, I want to talk about the Knicks front office. The Knicks front office fired my man David Fisdale. They had a right to do that. These two dudes, Scott Perry and, and Steve Mills, I'm trying to figure out at what point does the NBA ownership groups that are owning the Knicks and the Chicago Bulls say maybe it's not the coaches and maybe it's not the players if they are cooking up the wrong thing maybe it's the people who are leading these, these things Gar Foreman and uh, 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 John Paxson have been running the Bulls into the ground and Steve Mill and Scott Perry ain't been doing that hot in New York either. now People were anticipating the Bulls to be a lot better than they are, but they and they they nine games under five hundred, and they are four and six in their last ten. They lost their last one. The New York Knicks are six and twenty one. They are on pace for another abysmal season. How are these people keeping their jobs? That's what I really want to know. How in the all hell are these guys keeping their jobs? I don't get it, but. Hey man, maybe maybe it's above my pay grade. Anybody at the New York Knicks office, hit your boy on Twitter at h at hrap underscore b. Hit me on the DM. I slide you my phone number and let's talk about it. Otherwise, the people in New York and the people in Chicago need to pack their shit and never go to the United Center or damn uh, Madison Square Garden until y'all get your shit together. These teams are horribly assembled. You're not allowing coaches to develop. And you keep saying it's the coach fault. You even had this jackass John Paxson say, you can't do this overnight. Bruh, it's been three years. It's been three years, homie. Teams still suck. They need to get this man the boots. And Steve Mills and Scott Perry, Steve Mills and Scott Perry, y'all ass need to be packing too. The National Basketball Association does not need any more mediocre leadership. Otherwise, if you do, you don't need the fans that you have. I'm just saying. With that being said, this week's dumbest shit in the history of the news is two years ago, this dude called, told Russell Westbrook, get on your knees and suck my privates like you used to do in slavery. Of course, this is a dude from another culture. He's not a brother. He's a other. The, uh, the Utah Jazz banned this jackass forever from their state. Much like this last case that we talked about on Brothers Don't Work It Out, where George Zimmerman suing Trayvon Martin's family for $100 million for defamation of character, this jackass has the same idea again. Where are the court clerks and the people who are controlling the United States uh, uh, federal court cases? This should be dismissed as a frivolous lawsuit. Why in the hell is any judge sitting on the bench paying attention to this tomfoolery? Help me understand this. You insult a man in front of 19,000 people. The people around you hear you throwing racial epithet, disrespecting this man. And the, the organization and the people who own the building said, you know what, we don't like people like you here. 
you have to go forever.